Well, it's been another great day for the Ukrainians in the Ukraine against Russia war. Uh, we won't go into all the details on the land, but Mariupol still holds, despite the anticipated Russian regrouping attack, although it does seem it may have been split in two now. The city, which we know, um, as with Stalingrad, you know, the last pockets of German defenders, when you chop them in two, that's when command and control breaks down, and that's when, you know, the end may be near there. Um, but we'll see. Um, but the reason why I say it's been a great day is they have actually sunk the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet, the Moskva, the Moscow, with two uh, Neptune missiles. Now, Moscow is an old ship, but it's a pretty large one. Uh, displaces something like, ooh, I forget the tonnage of it now. Um, it's, it's roughly equivalent to one of our type 40, um, our old Type 42 destroyers. It was built in 1979. Um, so it's fairly old, but it's very, very capable. Um, it's mainly, uh, well, it, it does all the things that, you know, one of our old destroyers would have done, like the ones took to the Falklands. So it has anti-ship missiles. Um, it has air defence missiles. Uh, but it also has the capability to launch nuclear missiles, which obviously our, our 42s didn't, because we were doing that then from those. Um, although we did have nukes on other ships. Um how did this happen? Um, my feeling is actually from looking at the ship, um, I don't think it has much close in defence against um, against sea skimming missiles. That's, that's honestly what I think. Um, I mean, nowadays, the way we build modern ships is you have things like the phalanx system, uh, these sort of auto cannons that have an incredibly high rate of fire. And will literally, if something really comes close in, um, they can rake it with fire. But from distance, you can take out missiles as well with other missiles. Um, in terms of air defence, the Moscow has an S three hundred system, which is just one of the the Russian. It's kind of like you know one of one of their um, main sort of high altitude aeroplane anti anti aircraft missile systems. Um, so yeah, it can take out a jet fighter that's flying above you. It's not going to hit a sea skimming missile. Um, I don't know if it would even see one. I'm only going by looking at it, um, but from the specifications, yeah, there doesn't seem to be any of these, these close-in weapon systems to defend it. Um, this is one of the problems that we had in the Falklands, that because it was really the first time that kind of combat had been fought with exosets coming in low, skimming the sea, um, uh, aeroplanes coming in, very, very low dropping bombs. Um, you know, we literally were strapping um, assault rifles and machine guns of various sorts onto the rails of the ship. Um, there was the odd before us type gun. I don't know if it was actually a before us, but it looked like a World War II before us. And there's a famous video of this young lad, um, very, very young, who actually takes out a jet fighter with this perfect hit just by deflection shooting as it's, um, you know, going around uh, San Carlos Bay. And, you know, remarkable. But... Um, after that, that's when we started putting in, you know, well, I guess everybody building new ships. It really changed um, this need for close-in weapon system because we'd never seen how effective the sea scaling missiles were. We did know that they were dangerous. Um, what we were doing, I mean, the way of the first sinking that we suffered was the Sheffield. Um, and that was ridiculously, absolutely crazy. It was um, forming a radar picket out in front with a couple of other Type 42s, up out in front of the main fleet. Ridiculously, it was transmitting to London, updating when it was on picket duty. And this is just crazy. It's typical British dumbness, you know, at times in war. Um, so its radar was out of action. So I had no idea that two, um, uh, I presume they were Skyhawks, carrying exosets were even coming in. It could have prob... I, I don't know if they'd been out of range of uh, the sea darts or not, but... Um, it could have certainly taken evasive action if it had seen them. Um, and what they would do, because they didn't have the ability to shoot down a sea skimming missile, but the Type 21 frigates did with their SeaCat system. And so, because um, again, the sea darts like this, um, you know, S300 system, is for taking out um, aeroplanes higher up in the air. Um, whereas the SeaCat, is for taking out missiles and things that are much closer in, and it can take out a faster moving target and so on. And the idea was they, they would pair them up, and they were in a pair, 
Um, but the problem was that it was turning at the time. And so um, the view, I forget which um, Type uh, 21 frigate it was, but it knew the missile was coming, but it couldn't get a shot off at it because its view was blocked. And it was so low down, obviously, because it skims the sea. <laughs> it was so low down that it, it saw it coming, but it couldn't get a shot off because it was blocked by the Sheffield. Um, and then, of course, with the Sheffield, I don't even believe that the warhead exploded. At least that's what I read. I'm told that it just the missile en engine was so hot on it that the rocket engine that when it ploughed into the ship, um, obviously it started fires. There'd be rivers of aluminium and things flowing around. Um, um, actually, it cut through the main firefighting. Um, or, you know, da what, what do you call it, sort of damage containment, I suppose the, the correct term, uh, equipment. And so they were really struggling to contain the fire. And the moment that they knew that this fire is out of control, they knew it could reach um, the sea dark missile um, silos. And that's when there would have been a massive magazine detonation, potentially. And so that's when they abandoned ship quite correctly. Um, it would seem, yeah, with this um, Russian ship... It didn't appear to have yeah any sort of defence like that. Um, was it paired up with uh, any sort of um, ship that can take out a missile? Uh, I don't know. Um, we know with other Exocet attacks, the one that um, the one that we're going back to the Falklands now, the one that sunk Atlantic Conveyor, uh, that was actually heading for HMS Glasgow, uh, another Type Forty Two destroyer. Um, it wasn't able to be taken out. Um, with any sort of missile, but what they did do was fire chaff at it, and they managed to, you know, blur its radar enough so it didn't know where the ship was. But unfortunately, the Exocet was, you know, quite smart, and so all it would do then, it would just change its course a little and lock on to the nearest um, or the next biggest target. And of course, it saw an even better one, think, you know, it looked like an aircraft carrier, didn't it? Uh, the Atlantic of Air, and in, indeed it had almost been equipped as one. They built hangars and things on it to operate nukes off it, and you know that was obviously the biggest loss next to um, next to Hermes or um, Invincible. Uh, but yeah, so in, so in this case, um, I, I don't know. I mean, did it? But it's possible. It's such an old system that they. I mean, obviously the Russians aren't going to tell us too much about the specifications of their equipment. Um, did it even see it coming? It may not have even seen the missiles coming, um, but surely they came from. It came from land. This is a land-based system that could be fired from up to something like twenty miles inland, um, and they fired two of them. So, and yeah, if, if we presume that they're there skimming the sea, um, and they're very small, very fast-moving targets, but either way, it appeared to have no defence against them. Did it? What? Did it even see them coming? Probably not. Um, or they surely they would at least be able to fire chaff and try and distract them. What we don't know much about is the actual missiles, these um, Neptune missiles, because they've literally just been finished by Lush Design Bureau. Um, they were finally completed in 2021. They came online. Obviously, they've been designing them for several years. Um, and the Ukrainians haven't released any specifications on them. So, you know, we don't know anything about them. Could it be that they're... I mean, one thing that you can use, of course, that gets through all sorts of things, you know, it, this is obviously what uh, the Star Street missile uses to take out planes, is a laser guidance system as opposed to heat seeking. But then again, I would have thought Chuff would mess up that. So, um, yes, we, we don't even sort of know, if, you know, what type of radar it's, it's using, uh, what its guidance system is, um, what its speed is. We, we believe it's subsonic. Um, but they haven't released any information on that quite wisely. Um, and interestingly, they said before that it was a Vasily Baikov uh, that, that we know that was sunk, um, the alleged uh, stealth uh, corvette or something, but um, that was harassing the troops on Snake Island and took them prisoner. Um, the ones that said, go F yourselves, uh, Russian warship. Actually, it seems it was this one, the Moscow. And that's why I thought, to be honest, it was, it was from a channel that I trusted that said it was a Vasily Baikov, but no, it wasn't it. You know, you see from the picture, much larger ship, and it it was the Moscow. So, um, yeah, the Ukrainians have left them back, haven't they? Um, obviously, the Russians uh, haven't admitted they've they've admitted it's been evacuated, and it seems they've um, people close uh, to those in the know have said it has finally sunk now. Um, 
Uh, but uh, they're trying to say that the cause is being investigated. Maybe it was a spontaneous ammunition um, explosion, a magazine explosion, or, you know, a fire. You know, maybe someone was smoking uh, too near one of the, the missile silos. Um, they didn't say that, but, you know, that's the implication. So they've not admitted it was the Ukrainians, but I think it's pretty clear it was. So, um, you know, this is a big blow. To lose your flagship like that, I mean, obviously, they're... Uh, it, they haven't said there was any loss of life, um, which is surprising. Uh, well, it's surprising if there wasn't, is what I mean, because um, it was hit by two of these missiles, 150 kilogram warheads each. Um, so uh, it would be surprising if there was no loss of life. But I don't know if the Russians would release that anyway if there was. Um, so anyway, waffed on long enough. Um, yeah, quite a big day to sink the flagship of your enemy.